Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, we're going to talk about why you should learn to sell um, when you don't need the money. And this is very similar to a phrase that I talk about in other videos, which is uh, banks don't lend you money when you need it. And that was the phrase that changed my understanding of credit, okay? Because right now, I have over $258,000 in lines of credit, and I didn't know how to get that until I understood that phrase. And it's the same thing with sales, right? So here's the thing. In order for you to make more money in the society, you either have to learn to sell or find people who will learn to sell for you. And the best mindset to have when you learn to sell is when you don't need the money, right? And we all have to sell something. So people say like, oh man, I like, I'm, I'm bad at sales, right? But you know, even a, getting a job, getting a job, that's the sale, that's that you're actually selling your labor, right? You know, if you ever hear the term market with something like job market or real estate market, you're selling something. So if you're sending like 100 applications to employers and you get a, a phone call interview or whatever, that's actually a sales interview because you're trying to convince the employer, hey, buy my labor for like $10 an hour to work at McDonald's or something like that. I think they pay you more at McDonald's nowadays, but you get my point, right? But here's the thing. Let's say even if when you're looking for a job, do you have more negotiation staying power if you already have a job that pays well versus like, oh, I'm unemployed, right? It's much easier to sell your employment uh, when you already have a job. And that's the same thing about selling in general is that you got to learn to sell when you don't need the money. Like too many people, this is what they do. I think they encourage you to, quote, burn the boats. And if you don't know what that means, um, you know, like a picture, I think it's associated with like the Spanish conquistadors. Uh, but basically it's like sacrifice everything and leave everything behind, you know, like burn the boats. And I'm not really sure if I agree with this message. Because if you burn the boats and you essentially don't have any staying power or leverage, right? So sometimes when you have leverage, like when you're trying to get like an increase in salary, um, you, you, you have to have different alternative options, right? So for example, a lot of, a lot of times um, you don't get like the big major raises at your work until you like find another job because it's like, oh my goodness, this guy's, this person's going to leave me. And, you know, if I don't give him an increase in salary right then and there, oh my, uh, I'll have to find people and retrain them. You know what I'm saying? So that's why that you have to learn how to do things at a time when you don't need it. Right. And as you can see right here, this is kind of a recent screenshot of mine. Uh, current situation, again, you know, some people might freak out by seeing the zero balance on my checking account, but wink, wink, if you know why that is, aka velocity banking, you know, you'll realize it's not such a big situation to freak out about. But as you can see here, I have a little bit under 10 grand of deposits, 10 grand of withdrawals. So whatever I do, I'm not in a position where I need to like make more money, especially when I used to make about $20,000 uh, a year, and which is about 1600 a month. And I, I even learned to learn, live off of that. So if I learned to live off of 1600 a month, I was like in a mindset, like if I make double this, like I'm going to be super rich. <laughs> and so here's the thing. I do even want to get to a, more, a point where I make more than this, right? And the only way that I think I get to more a uh, point where I make more money of this is just learn how to make more sales. But I'm doing it at a point now where I don't even need the money. Right. Like it'll be cool if I make 50 grand a year and I've heard of other people making like 50 grand a year off of like YouTube and their side business off of YouTube. And I think right now is the best time to do it because I don't need the money. You know what I'm saying? And you become a lot more objective and cool with your prospects if they don't want to buy because you don't you don't need the money. Right. And so if the, your prospect sense is like, you know, that you need your sale in order for you to eat tomorrow. It's kind of like, you know, what, what's the animal that senses like blood, blood in the water? I don't even know. Is it piranhas? I don't even know. It's like, maybe it's like piranhas in the water, right? But, you know, and also it, it helps you keep you objective because there are certain uh, businesses out there where you got to touch a lot of prospects, right? Like wholesaling, 
real estate, you got to probably collect call like 12 hours uh, a day cold calling and driving around. And, and it's crazy that, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but it's crazy the amount of effort that you need to put into essentially doing those things. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I don't, I don't want to do that. But my point is, is that when you're, when um, you have money, like when you have money and you sell, you're a lot more objective about how much effort is needed to sustain your business, right? And so one of the things I heard from a course that I'm taking, which is about like brokering uh, seller finance notes. And if you have no idea what that is, basically you're trying to find um, mortgages. They call, them, they call them purchase money mortgages, but you're finding your mortgages and trying to sell them at a discount, right? There's a whole business uh, for that. And so the, the, the guy who teaches the course is Jeff Armstrong. And uh, if you want to look him up, just type in Armstrong Capital on Google. And he's like the number four no broker in the country. And then he shared his statistics where it's like, yeah, I talked to 80,000 people to do 2,000 transactions. I was like, whoa. Because here's the thing. Like, let's say I quit my job to do note brokering, right? Like, let's say you quit your job to do note brokering. It's like, okay, like, um, like if you talk to 100 people and those first 100 people say no, then you're going to freak out and you're going to feel like a failure when in reality you got to have like a cool – um be level-headed and understand like the big picture that, hey, you might have to talk to 80,000 people to do those 2,000 transactions, but you don't know when the first transaction has happened, especially if you have to talk to 80,000 people, right? Makes sense. And, and other things too is that, again, staying power is important, right? So if you don't make sales in like, I don't know, a couple of months or whatever, or let's say you, you're, you're a doctor and you have a rental property, you know, you don't want to quit your doctor job for real estate because if your real estate cash flow is like $100, $300 a month and you're making over a hundred dollars or $200,000 a year as a doctor, that is probably the, the stupidest, um, <laughs> you know, like it's, it, it, I don't want to say, I don't even know how to describe it, but I don't think that's a good idea. Like, I don't think it's a good idea to burn that boat just so you could make $100, $300 a month in cash flow real estate. And then if the tenant ever detects like in their mind that you need that money, you know, they probably will play games with you and not give it to you. It's kind of weird, right? Whereas if you have that staying power and the tenant doesn't give you like that monthly income, that rent, then your mindset is like, all right, I'll just kick them out and find another paying tenant because you don't need the money and you're more focused on I'm just focused on providing that good or service to the marketplace, and therefore the marketplace will will uh, give me the money. But if you're in a position where like, oh my goodness, I need the money because I can't eat, then then people, you know, I don't know what it is, and I'm not like this, but people love to play games with you. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, this is a Korean Atlanta mentorship. Um, if you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the Google form link below. Uh, other than that, have a great day, and we'll speak next time.